Yes, folks, Billy TK is a master manipulator. And when people allow themselves to be blinded by a very strong desire, such as getting rid of a dern, for example, they are easily manipulated. Even when Billy gives no proof to many of his claims. He says he has huge voter support, but gives no proof of that. He says he's funded by the people, but gives no evidence of that. He says he's been in the military, and I, have, I haven't seen any proof of that. But anyway, in today's video, I'm going to show you why I believe Billy staged that so-called death threat against him in order to draw attention to himself. But first, I want to cover two other issues. And the first being for the people who missed what Billy said about me on the Vinnie Eastwood show in respect to this question I asked him. Billy, would you be prepared to sign a document stating that you would not treat Maori and Pākehā differently? Things we're becoming targets, and it's just, you know, that's just, you know, that's just unbelievable. And look, I've just seen a a question. A question from Terry Opines, who who has spoken from the hip without any facts supporting them, asking me if I treat any Pākehā and Māori different, and I'd sign a um, um, a document to that. What an idiot question! I wow, Billy, did I hit a nerve there, Billy? So in other words, Billy, you are too gutless to sign off on your own statements about equality. promote that New Zealand has got to come together as a family regardless of, of race. That's just the divisive um, tool of the left to, to keep us all divided. So wow, so I must be an agent of the left. Hmm, wow, Billy, I'm a lefty. That's a first for me. Really, Billy? Really? Anyway, now to something else you probably don't know about Billy. And hat tip to uh, Pauline Franz for this one. Yeah, now folks, this is uh, Billy's resume on uh, LinkedIn. So we have Billy Tikahika, Managing Director of at Ind Indigenous Business Consultants. September 2017 to the present. Ah, so here we have it. Expert Maori member of the Oceana Silk Road Network China New Zealand business platform. Now folks, the Silk and Road has now been replaced by the Belt and Road Initiative. So please, Mr. Anti-Communist China Billy, please explain away this. This is your resume, Billy. This is your writing. And Billy always keeps talking about the military. He loves the military. He is, he is a real military man. So surely that information should be in this resume as well. So let's have a look. No. 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 No, no, nowhere to be found. Anyway, folks, now to step one of Billy's staged threat on his life. Here, now, folks, this clip is from Hamilton about two weeks prior to Billy's so-called death threat in Christchurch. We were a little bit late uh, to, tonight with a broadcast that I'd scheduled for 17.15 or 5. Oh, a bit of military speak there, Billy. Very, very nice touch. 15. And the reason for that is that I had had a disturbing phone call from somebody in the know 
to warn me that I, I was a target. A target of, of many different types of campaigns, ultimately ending in, in possibly a threat to my safety and that of my team and of our family. Yeah, so that was step one, planting the seed. So step two is making it come true. Okay, so what I want to announce to everybody is that um, we are getting ready to um, approach the New Zealand police today. I've received a, a death threat aimed at me and possibly uh, my team as, as well. Ah, so you called the police then, Billy. So I assume you're going to show us the police record of that. But Billy, the real question I have is this. Why did you allow Cross the Rubicon to come to your motel room during this so-called death threat on your life? Well, here's why. The New Zealand Army approached me. He was in the Army at the same time I was, and these hundreds and hundreds of soldiers that are prepared to, to back me up. Hundreds and hundreds of soldiers. Really, Billy? Hundreds and hundreds. Um, I'm meeting security people today um, about that, um, but I can assure you, as, as Lee from um, Crossing the Rubicon found out on Saturday, this was absolutely real. Yes, that is why you allowed Cross the Rubicon to come to your so-called dangerous motel. You needed a trusted person to validate your hopes. Now, I would say Billy is a pathological liar, much the same as Jussie Smollett. Yeah, now folks, this interview took place after Smollett was exposed for staging the MAGA country hoax. I'm Robin Roberts in New York. Musician and actor Jesse Smollett sat down with me for his first interview since that night in Chicago. Smollett told me how he's doing now and responds to those who doubt his account. I'm pissed off. What is it that has you so angry? Is it the, the attackers? It's the is attackers, it? but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Then it became a thing of like, oh, how can you doubt that? Like, how do you, how do you not believe that? It's the truth. Yes, it's real. Sound familiar? And then it became a thing of like, oh, it's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see the truth. What happened that night, Jesse? When I landed in Chicago and Frank Gatson, who's like my uncle, and he's also my creative director, and he picked me up. And then we got back to the apartment. There was no food. And so I went out to Walgreens thinking that they were 24 hours and to have a smoke. Yeah, now this guy is completely believable, but he's lying through his teeth, much the same as Billy does. <laughs> uh, Walgreens was closed. Um, so I called him up and I said, hey, I'm going to run to Subway, which was across the street, and I'm going to get a salad. Do you want anything? I went to the Subway and got the order. During that time, I texted my manager thinking that he was still in Australia because he was on an Australian tour with one of his other clients. Mm -hmm. and I said, yo, call me when you can. He called me immediately. And while he was on the phone, I uh, heard, as I was crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. And I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. Uh, and I didn't answer. I kept walking and then I heard Empire. So I turned around and I said, did you just say to me, I mean, I see the uh, attacker uh, masked and he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling, you know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off. And I 
saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out. And it was sitting there. And my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone, and I said, Brandon. And he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down, and I see that there's a rope around my neck, which I hadn't You hadn't noticed that, it before? No, you didn't because see? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck, and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. Did you get any kind of description of the attack? I gave a body description, and I, you know, because I saw this, but, and, you know, right here or whatever, but I didn't see, I can't tell you what color their eyes were. I can't tell you. And I did not see anything except the second person I saw running away. And the first person, yeah, I saw, saw his stature. I gave the description as best as I could. You have to understand also that it's Chicago in winter. People can wear ski masks and nobody's going to question that. The police have gone through a lot of video and they were able to capture an image of two people of interest. Yes, and as we all know, these two people were paid by Smollett to stage the hoax. Yeah, now folks, I've been watching Billy for a while now, and he seems to possess all the hallmark qualities of a good actor. He's intelligent, he has a great memory, he's articulate, and most of all, he's believable. I honestly believe he's capable of staging a hoax. And I also believe he's a pathological liar who likes to draw attention to himself as a martyr of some kind. 